All right, how's it going, y'all? So today we're gonna to be setting up this Mac Mini that is $700 as pretty much the perfect remote video editing server. So we can have a remote video editor. I actually have this for myself, so I can edit on the road, remote into this machine and do all of their editing. And that way you don't have to worry about moving terabytes of data around over the internet because everybody's now essentially a local editor. I'm gonna be doing this in Final Cut Pro, but both Premiere Pro and DaVinci have the ability to have multiple people in the same project by either setting up a server or using Premiere Teams. And so as long as everybody's on the same network, which with this thing, they all will be on the exact same network for all intents and purposes. So these things are awesome. This is the base level Mac mini. The only upgrade I've done to it is adding in the 10 gigabit ethernet port. So it is $600 base price plus $100 upgrade to make this a $700 machine. And as you can see right here, I've added this dummy HDMI plug to basically trick this computer into thinking there's a monitor plugged in. Then what we're gonna go ahead and do is set this thing up as a Parsec server so we can just remote into it and do all of our editing from the local network. These new Mac minis, this is the M4 just complete standard Mac mini, fly through video. So most people can get away with these, though you could do the exact same workflow if you needed more throughput with the Mac Studio that just came out, actually today, funny enough, with the higher processing power and the M4 Pro and M4 Ultra chips. The reason why we can make this such good value is the thing that Apple really gets you on that makes these things cost a lot more is storage. So this base unit only has 256 gigs of storage, but because we're editing directly off of a NAS, storage does not matter. So honestly, we get by with 100 gigs of internal storage. I'm not gonna tell Apple that. And now all chips come with at least 16 gigs of RAM. That is the other most expensive upgrade. So because of all that, this is a super performant little thing and the 10 gigabit built in is really nice to have. This is just gonna go on my server rack and it sips power. While idling, this thing takes up about three watts of power, which is just unbelievably low. So you won't even notice, even if you had five or six of these things running, they just sip power when no one's using them and even when somebody is using them. It is still minuscule compared to even running a monitor. And so this right here is my setup. What I've got hooked up in the rest of the network is an all SSD NAS that is running true NAS scale that I've got as the file server that stores all my assets. So that's what I'm actually video editing off of. And that's why the 10 gigabit upgrade to this thing is really important because now we can push and pull files from that server at 1.2 gigabytes per second and it just flies through it. So that way you're pretty much not gonna run into any bottlenecks in terms of getting your video to this client. And so the only thing left to do now is plug this thing on in and get it set on up. I've already gone through and done the basic install, but I'm gonna walk through the entire thing here. So you'll see, I've got this dummy HDMI plug in here. And that is just kind of a problem solver. You can buy these things off of Amazon for really, really, really cheap. And all it does is it just pretends like there is a 4K monitor on the other side of it, but there is none. That's because Mac OS is a little weird about booting and running without anything plugged in. And so instead of trying to screw around with software, trying to get it to work, it can sometimes just be a lot easier to plug one of those things in. And now the Mac just thinks there is a 4K monitor out and Parsec can hook right into it without any trouble. And so they'll boot just fine. And that's why I've got that in there. It just helps a lot. So I've already set this thing on up. So I'm just gonna go ahead and plug it into my network and we're gonna remote into it. And I'm gonna show you the full setup to doing this. Obviously the very first time you set this thing up, you'll need a keyboard, mouse, and monitor. But after that, you'll only be ever interacting with this thing through the internet or through Parsec. So you will need none of that anymore. So I'm just gonna go ahead and get plugged in the network and get my laptop hooked up and let's go into it. All right, so for those of you who have never used Parsec before, Parsec is like my secret weapon for remote video editing because it just solves so many problems. The biggest problem with remote video editing is trying to move terabyte projects to your remote editors. It sucks trying to sync footage of that size over the internet. And so what a lot of people end up doing is shipping hard drives across the country so people can edit. Using a Parsec workflow, like we're gonna be setting up in this video, 
flips that entire problem on its head. Because now your editors, for all intents and purposes, are in your local network. That's because the computer they're working off of is just in your local network, and so they can all get the exact same assets as you can on a local network speed. So the second you upload a new project to the NAS, your editors can immediately start working off of it. As soon as one of them closes the project, the next person can open it. It is so nice and it gives you what is effectively all your employees coming in the office, but none of them have to. The only thing they need are computers that are powerful enough to edit off of. And the one downside with this is, if you have 12 people who need to work simultaneously, you need 12 of these or 12 of whatever computer you're working with. This all works just the same with Windows as well. But other than that, it makes it so easy and you don't need very strong upload speed because it's super compressed, really low latency, and their laptops, whatever they're remotely hooking up to, don't really need much processing power at all because all the processing is done locally at your network. So as I said, I already went through and did this full install, but we're gonna go ahead and just see everything you need to do to set this up. And because of that, I'm on Parsec on my computer right here. We can see remote one, which is this guy right here, just shows up and I can hit connect to it. And now I get to choose who to log in as. You can see I've got my personal account and this remote account. So that's how I like to do it because now I can still remote into this and have all my settings full admin control, but this guy right here can also log in with limited privileges. So I'm gonna go ahead and just log into my regular account. It's gonna disconnect here. And then once it finishes connecting again, it'll come back up. So anytime you log out and log back in, it does that quick log out and log back in. So that's the one nuisance with this. But now you can see right here, I am hooked up and in my computer. So you are currently seeing my screen on my laptop, but we are remotely parsecced into this guy right here. And we can go into all of our settings and pretty much operate and edit as if we were local. So I can go ahead and pull up a Final Cut Pro project. And it is just buttery smooth. It is really easy to set up and use. And for all intents and purposes, I am able to edit off of this. It's not the exact same experience as being fully local. So I can tell the color is a little bit off, but it's completely usable. And compared with trying to ship proxies and stuff across the country, this is way easier. You can get used to it pretty much in an instant. And for most people, they will be a subframe latency in terms of network throughput. You can see all the stats right here but our encode and decode time all adds up to under 10 milliseconds, which is phenomenal. So this right here is the end result, and this is the experience your editors will be having. I'm gonna go ahead and just close out of this thing. And now I wanna go through the full setup to actually making this possible. So the first thing you need to go ahead and do is open up a web browser. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is we're going to download the Parsec version for Mac OS, the lock screen version. So there is a slightly different version for Mac OS if you want it to be able to do what I did there and log in. So otherwise, the default version of Parsec does not allow you to log out and log in. And so that obviously would not work for a headless machine because you would have to physically log in on the local computer and then be able to Parsec into it. But if you use the Parsec login screen option, you can do that. And so just download this specific installer and go through the regular install. After that, getting it set up is really easy. Right now, this is my Parsec account, and you can use Parsec Teams to give everybody full access and they've got an entire system. Or if it's just you, you can just use Parsec Personal. They've got tons of options there for that. But once you install it, you wanna come in and you want to make sure your host settings are enabled. And when you do that, it's just going to have you enable a few macOS system settings. It's pretty straightforward if you've ever installed anything on macOS, just say yes, 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 to all that. And you can set up your bandwidth limitation here. This will tell you how much bandwidth Parsec is allowed to use. 
45 and 50 megabit is more than enough to get really nice pretty image. It uses a very small amount generally. So after that, the last thing you need to make sure that is set is come into system settings, go into privacy and security, and then come on down into file vault and file vault needs to be disabled. This is one thing that does lower the security of this, but we're not too worried about people physically breaking in and stealing this and having any data on it, but you have to disable encryption on here. Otherwise, macOS will not let the lock screen work. So then after that, you're pretty much set. This works where this machine can reboot and it will automatically get that Parsec connection on launch. And it works really nice and cleanly. One setting I would recommend just to make sure that this works a little bit better is go into the energy settings and click startup automatically after a power failure. That way, power goes out. When it comes back online, it'll immediately start back up. And then I also prevent automatic sleeping when the display is off, just so this thing never goes to sleep, full sleep, because even then, it only sips like two watts of power. All right, so now that you've got all the settings running, if this was just gonna be only for you, you could leave this with your own Apple ID, but let's say you want other people to be able to access it. Obviously, you don't want them hooked up to your Apple ID. What you can do is now just come into our users and group and create a new remote user. So with that, I'm gonna call this guy remote02 and just make up a password for it. So one thing you can't do virtually through Parsec, at least I've not found a way to do it just yet, is set up a user for the very first time. So I'm not actually going to log in with this remote O2 because I would have to have the actual monitor hooked up to it to do that. It's just that first initialization that you go through that you require it. If you wanted to have like a little jet KVM, you could totally use that to manage these things all the time. But for now, I'm just going to switch to my actual account that I've been using, Remote01, basically. So I can easily switch to it by just coming up here, clicking on Remote, and then logging on in. So one other thing, especially if you are going to be doing this as a full workflow, is it might make sense to have a smart switch a smart power switch hooked up to this. So if you're ever remote and just need to reboot it because, oh, hey, somehow it got logged out and you just need to start fresh, it's not a bad idea. And that's actually what I've got it hooked up to. Have the ability to remotely power cycle it by just turning the outlet off and turning it back on again. That way, if you need to, you can just reboot the thing and you never have to hook up a monitor to it. So this is where I am now hooked up as remote. And so I've actually gone through and I've created an account on the NAS for this guy right here. So when I log in right here, I am actually signed in with this remote 01 user. So that way it is limited to only the permissions to that user, which is really useful. And if a file gets deleted or something, you just know which device did it. So now I can leave this up and running all the time and it's just going to do its thing. Now I can have all my remote employees hook up directly into their own computers on the network and be able to do everything as if they were locally on here. They can pretty much fully work directly from this machine. And while it's not perfect, it is so much better than any other alternatives. It's definitely worth trying out. All right, well, that's going to be it for the setup. Parsec makes this incredibly easy to use, and now you have the ability to remotely video edit from wherever you are while having access to your entire file server, which is really the best of both worlds. I do this professionally. I set these up all the time for people. If you'd like to check out the link down in the description below, you can hire me. And if you have any other questions, put those down in the comments below. And have a good one. Bye.